In the last video, we looked at the set data structure as well as some of the constraints that the set data structure adheres to. Now, in this video, we're going to be looking at how we can take this a step further and try and implement the set in Go. So let's kick this implementation off by creating a new struct at the top of our file, just below our imports, and we're going to call this set. This is going to be a struct, and we're going to give it an elements field, which will be a map of strings to empty struct. Let's give it a comment. So set our representation, representation of a set data structure. So let's break down what we are going to do in this video. Now, effectively, we're going to create some methods based on this set struct that will allow us to add, remove, and do things like list the elements within this map here. Now, new elements are going to be stored within the string variable here, or the, the string key for this map, and they'll be instantiated with an empty struct. And the reason we're using an empty struct as opposed to something like a Boolean to check to see if it exists is in Go, an empty struct will only use zero bytes and a Boolean value will use one byte. So we're effectively optimizing the memory usage here. Now, given that we're using a map within Go, we're going to have to have a method or a mechanism that will allow us to instantiate this map. Now, in order to get around this, I'm gonna create a function called new set that is going to return a pointer to a set. And we're gonna do the following. So we're gonna first instantiate the set. So var set set. And then we're gonna say set.elements is equal to make map string to empty struct, like so. And then finally, we're gonna return the set. Perfect. With this in place, we can now move on to creating some of the helper methods based off the set struct. So the first thing that we're gonna do is to tackle the add element method now this is going to look like this. It's going to take in a pointer to the set. And I'll take in an element as the argument, which will be of type string. And all we want to do here is to do s.elements. We want to pass in the string element. And then we want to instantiate an empty struct using the double curly brace syntax like so. Cool. So let's add a comment to our add method. So add adds an element to our set. Now you'll notice how simple this function is. We don't do any checking to see if an element already exists within the set, as really there's no point. If we, for the first time, get a new element, we'll instantiate that to an empty struct. If it's a duplicate element, then again, it's just going to be instantiated. So there's no real change depending on whether it's the first element that we're adding or the fifth or 50th um, instance of the same element. Now that we have a method that allows us to add to our, our set, let's do the flip side action, which is going to be delete. So func takes in a pointer receiver to our set, delete, takes in the element we want to delete, and this will return an error. And we're going to give this a comment. So delete removes an element from our set if it exists. Cool. So the first thing we're going to want to do is to check to see if that element exists. So if exists is equal to s.elements, we'll pass in the key, which is element. And if it doesn't exist, then we want to return errors.new element not present in set. Save that and it should import the errors package at the top. So make sure that that's there. Otherwise, we want to then call the inbuilt delete function. We'll pass in the map, so s.elements and the key, which will be ln. Finally, we want to return nil as at this point there will be no errors. Cool, so we've got the ability to add and remove elements from our set. 
Let's now add one of the helper functions or methods that will allow us to check to see if an element exists within a set. Now again, this is going to take in a pointer receiver to the set. Contains element string and it's going to return a boolean depending on whether it exists or not. So it contains checks to see if an element exists within the set. Now what we can do here is we can do underscore exists is equal to s dot elements element and then we can return exists simple as that. Cool. So the final method that we want to implement is going to be the list method which will list out all of the elements within our set. It's not going to take in any arguments and it's not going to return anything. And we want to give it a comment list prints out all of the elements within our set. Now, in order to list everything, we want to basically iterate through everything. So for the key, we can ignore the value and range set dot elements. We want to do fmt dot print line the key like so. Cool, so that's us completed our set implementation. Let's now test that out within the main function. So I'm gonna instantiate a new set. And my set is equal to new set, like so. And let's try add something. So my set dot add. And let's say this is a set of planets. So I'm gonna add earth. I'm gonna add my set dot add Venus. And let's do Mars. So let's first of all, now that we've added these things, try and print everything out. So my set dot list. And we can run this using go run main dot go. Now run through everything. Prints out sets tutorial, Earth, Venus, Mars. Now let's check the uniqueness is working as expected. And we'll copy and paste the my set dot add earth and we'll just do it just under our list again run our application and you should see that earth is still only present once within our set next let's try and verify that the my set dot delete method works and we'll remove venus run this again and as you can see only earth and mars exist we have successfully destroyed Venus from our list of planets. And the final test we want to do is to FMT print line my set dot contains and Mars like so. Go run main dot go Earth Mars and it prints out true. So my set dot contains does contain Mars, so it does print out true. Perfect. Cool. So in this video, we have been able to successfully implement the set data structure in Go. And we've been able to test out some of the methods that we've implemented, such as add, delete, list, and contains.